adore him. Place 
to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let's go ahead and flip over to the gospel according to St. Luke, right there at the second chapter and verse number 11. And it reads, For until you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Once again, for until you was born this day in the city of David, which is, or the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we come this morning saying thank you. And we always say thank you, Lord, because we're just thankful for what you have given us and what you have provided us with, Lord. Today is a special thank you, Lord. We are so thankful that you sing your son Jesus to die for us, Lord. That this day we celebrate his birth, Lord. And for that we say thank you. I, as always, Lord, I ask that you speak to me, but you speak through me, Lord. Hide me so they can see thee, Lord. We, we, we just love you, Lord, for everything that you have done. Right now, this morning, on this splendid morning, Lord, I'm just asking that you give me the spiritual energy and the mental strength to preach your word, Lord with power, with excellence, uh, humble, Lord. Uh, just let it reach somebody this morning, Lord. Now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And everyone says, amen, amen, amen. I hope that you're out there watching, and I, I pray that you're online, and you comment in the comment section, please. Today I want to preach using as a subject, who is the Christ? Who is the Christ? When I was growing up, um, my mother had a unique way of getting my attention. She would say, boy, I asked her mom, can I go outside and play? And she will say, yeah, go on out there and play. Now, you ain't going to be out there all night. And I'm like, okay. And it seemed like just when the fun starts to rev up, more kids done came outside. And we're having a good game of tag. We have a good game of hide and go see. And I got the best hiding spot ever. And no one has found me in three consecutive rounds. And I'm sitting there hiding, and all of a sudden, from the top balcony, 429 North 2nd Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207, I would hear my mother call my name. And Dickie Jackson, this is how she would call my name. She would say, Courtney. And if she didn't get an automatic response, when she said, Courtney, she'll say it again just a little louder with a deeper tone. And she will say, Courtney. And if she didn't get the response then, because you got to remember, I'm in a good hiding spot. And I just want to finish this. I just want to get to the hole and touch home base. And she will say, Courtney. And I'm still being disobedient because I have this game on my mind. And I am trying my best to win this game. Because once again, I got the great, the greatest hiding spot ever. And I don't want to give it up. And all of a sudden, my mom was a fan of the young and the restless. And then there was a butler that, that, that worked in Victor. Newman's house. <laughs> Victor and Nikki, they had some money. They, they were a wealthy couple and they had a butler by the name of Miguel. And that's where my mother, being a fan of the YR, the young and the restless, she thought that she would give me the name 
of the butler from the young and arrested. And of course, I have my dad's last name. And this is what she would say. She done said Courtney three times now. But then she gets to the point, Deacon Jackson, where she says, Courtney the Gale woman. And it was at that moment that I knew I need to come out of that hiding spot and I need to get my butt home. Because if I don't, in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to be back outside picking my own switch. Or I'm going to have to go get that leather belt off that door strap, off that doorknob. When my mom gets to the name, Courtney Miguel Warren, she is meaning business. She isn't playing anymore. She don't call my name. And, and, and I believe that that's just where we are sometimes is that we say the name Jesus. We, we, we profess the name Jesus. When we're in the church, in the sanctuary, we sit there and we call the name Jesus. But do we really understand what the name Jesus means? His last name is not Christ. It's Jesus, the Christ. And I believe that this morning, <clears throat> we are in a place in time where we have lost the significance of the Christ. We really just don't understand who the Christ is and what he has done. I just want to let you know that there is a name above all names. It's wonderful to hear, bringing hope and cheer. It is certainly a name worth knowing because it belongs to a Savior worth loving. The name of Jesus truly is a lovely name. It is that lovely name that I want us to consider this morning. Christmas is here, and the one who bears that name is the reason that we're here. His name means so much to us. It speaks of much more than a baby, than a baby in a manger. Uh, it's much more than a baby wrapped in swaddling clothing. It's much more than men of intellect who stood at the stars and being guided by a particular star to find the star of humanity. <clears throat> and although this season has been commercialized that is about going out and seeing Christmas lights and fruit cake and fruit baskets and all I pray that we can get back to the original purpose and meaning of Jesus. I want you to find somebody in your household this morning and I need for you to ask them a question and say neighbor or family member who is the Christ? Well, the first thing I want to let you know is that we're going to look at his name, Jesus. Yeah, come here this morning. That's the first point that I want to make this morning is that his name, Jesus. And when we understand who Jesus is as the Christ, we also understand his preeminence. Somebody said preeminence. We understand his preeminence. Jesus is preeminent. That means that he is the first in everything. First in importance. First in honor. First in exaltation. Jesus is the head and the beginning. His name is not just part of a statement we use with standing in a statement in the church. It, it's just more than just saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We have to return Jesus to the headship of the church, to the headship of our life, to the head of everything that we do. He is the first thing that he name should be called when we step out of the bed in the morning. We ought to just say, Jesus, his preeminence. <laughs> oh, it should be more than just a statement where you stand up when you're a visitor at church and you said first, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. No, 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 baby, just don't 
just sit up there and make that statement out of repetition because that's what Jesus warned the Pharisees about. He said they pray out of repetition. They pray loudly so people can hear them, so that people can do all kinds of things and say this and say that. And he said that I don't need for you to be that way. So stop using his name in vain. Far too often we sit up there and we have these little sayings, these little slogans and everything like that. But, but so many use this statement, but in reality place everything else in front of Jesus, place their job, place their career, place their title. We have to learn how to stop that. Jesus said it like this, that the first thing you should do is seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Is there anybody here right now that's watching online right now is going to give honor to the name of Jesus and continue to put him first in your life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, because right here in Matthew's gospel, at the 20 word, 21st verse of this first chapter, Matthew says it like this. He says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Check, check, check it out. Come here, come here, come here. He, he says that she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sin. He says, Mary, you gonna give birth to a son, and this is what you're going to name him. This is what the angel is saying. You're going to give birth to a son, and you're going to name him Jesus, because he's going to save his people from their sin. Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. What a name, the name of Jesus. Uh, 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 in that day, Jesus was a common name. It is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua. And at his birth, Jesus became a special name. Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of mankind. God incarnate. He is superior to the sacrificial system, the first and the last of his kind. This was the name chosen by God. <laughs> Mary didn't take a survey. You know that Joseph had to out in a dream that she was even pregnant, so you know she didn't ask Joseph. They didn't set up together. They didn't have no baby shower. What shall we name him? They didn't do any of that. Why? Because God said, this is what you're going to name him. This name was chosen by God. Mary didn't name him. Joseph didn't name him, but he was named by God. It speaks of who he is. It declares his deity as the Son of God. Jesus is the name known in heaven. Jesus is the name that's recognized by angels. Jesus is the name that brings fear to Satan and the forces of hell. Never has a name endured the ages of time as the name of Jesus. It is still the name that brings comfort to those in despair. It is the name that brings salvation to the sinner. It is the name that brings hope to the hopeless. It is the name, hey, it is the name both love and hate. It is the name that both curse and honor. It is a name received and rejected. But Jesus is a name above all others. Hey. You don't know who to talk to, talk to Jesus. He's a supreme being. He's above everything else. And there will be a day. Yes, Lord. There will be a day where every knee must die bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Yeah, yeah that's what we gotta do. I gotta get out of here. It's Christmas. Imani wants to play with her toys this morning. <laughs> 
Charity wants to pray with her baby dog. Faith Hope, they got their own little thing. So let me go ahead and get on through this. I don't mean to hold you this long this morning, but we got to understand who this Christ is. <laughs> There's no other name like Jesus. But not only do we study and excel and pay reverence to the name Jesus, but we also have to see him as his person. We, we have to look at his name, Emmanuel, because Emmanuel describes his person. That's point number two right there. I hope you're taking notes this morning. I know you got the country ham going. You got the scrambled eggs going. It's down o'clock in the morning. You got your coffee in your hand. But I hope you got a notepad right there and you taking notes. And we already looked at the name of Jesus, but let's look at the name Emmanuel. Because Emmanuel speaks to his person. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Emmanuel means God with us. Not only will he save us, but he is also with us as well. Ooh, Lord have mercy. He, he's not only going to save us, but he's with us. He's right here with us as well. It reminds us of Jesus' humanity. It, it, it was no ordinary birth. It's not just another child. On that faithful Christmas day, God came in the form of a man and he dwelt among us. I like this. God names him Jesus. God said you will call him Yahshua, which means Savior. Salvation. He's coming to save his people. But if you see Emmanuel, that's the name that the people give him. Oh, you missed that, didn't you? God named him Jesus. But we named him Emmanuel. Because God says he's coming to save you, and we say he is here among us. Lord, have mercy. Oh, he said, they shall call him Emmanuel. Jesus is who he is. He is the Savior. But Emmanuel is what he does. Hey, he dwells amongst us. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that we are his own. That when I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he's right there with me. Hey, is there anybody here that know that he will be right there with you regardless of what you go through in this world? Hey. You got depression, he's right there with you. You got anxiety, he's right there with you. You friendless, he's right there with you. You comfortless, he's right there with you. On those nights where you're sleepless, can't find sleep, he's right there with you. When your friends turn their backs on you, when they stab you in the back, he's right there with you. I like what Paul says to the church in Philippi and Philippians, the second chapter and verse number seven. He said, Jesus made himself up of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Without Emmanuel, there will be no salvation. Had he not come, we will still be like, is there anybody here that's glad that he came as a humble babe to redeem us? Hey, he's right here with me. Regardless of what I go through, the breakup, the divorces, the arguments, the fighting, the losing of a job, he's right there with me. Hey. <laughs> yeah. God called him Jesus. We call him Amen. He's right there with us, y'all. Oh, Lord, that works. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Gotta go. But, but, but we also have to understand. We understand that Jesus comes to save us. Save us from our sins. Emmanuel, we name him. He's right here with us. 
But, but we got to understand him. Deacon Blakely, as a savior, we got to understand him as a savior, okay, uh, which is his purpose. Jesus came to save us. See, I'll let you know something real quick. Jesus is not a genie in the bottle that grants us any and all wishes. But Luke tells us that the angel tells the shepherds that for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Ooh, we got to look. Who is this Christ? He's a Savior. The angel have brought good tidings of great joy. Hey, y'all, what you been praying for, what you been looking for? It's here. You've been, you've been wondering, you've been questioning, it's been 400 years since the prophet Malachi has been here. We in that intertestamental period, we haven't heard from God that God will let the Greeks have took over, the Romans have took over, and we're calling out for a savior. The sacrificial system just seems like it's not working right now, but on that day, the angels brought good news and great joy. Hey, it can be good news for you if you use them in the right place. And the right circumstances, if we keep him as Savior. Mm. I, I know I'm stepping on some toes this morning. You probably, they probably cut off the broadcast now. They, they don't went on to another church service where they just keep playing the song Emmanuel all over again. And they sing a jingle bell, Temptation Saturday Night. <laughs> uh, they, they, they done moved on right now. But for you that are still watching <laughs> this morning, <laughs> I want you to know that you got to keep Jesus in the right place, in the right space, and understand that he is our Savior. <laughs> oh, the angel said, he's here, y'all. Your, 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 your Savior is here. Uh, and that's good news. And it's great joy. <laughs> the Savior of the world have been born in Bethlehem. Jesus came to deliver us from sin. That is why he came. His purpose was to save us. Uh, he, he could have come as a righteous judge to condemn. Uh, when, when, when he might he sees me, when she calls me, she knows that I am dead. She knows, no, she knows my real name. But if she's going to get anything from me, she knows not to say court. She knows how to say dead. She keeps me in that space and in that place in order to get what she needs. <laughs> Come here this morning. Jesus, he could have came as a righteous judge. He could have came and judged the whole world, condemned us all because there we are as, as filthy rags on a good day. We ain't nothing ain't right about us, any of that. But he came as a savior. Full of compassion. He, he didn't come for the wealthy or men of high degree. He came for the lowly sinner. <laughs> Those held captive by sin. That thing that has you strong to hold on you. That have you bound. He come to set you free from that. You got to keep Jesus in the right place, in the right space in order for him to do his job. For you to reap the benefits of why he came. Jesus came to set us free. Because Luke said in the 19th chapter and verse number 10, he says it like this. He says, uh, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came, y'all. Jesus came Okay? 
to seek, to look for, and to save those which was lost. Let me bring it home for you. Romans 5 and 6. For when we were without strength, that while we were still sinners, in due time, in the appropriate time, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. He, he died, but he could have judged you, but he didn't. He died for you. John 3, 16. We say that all day long. We have memorized that from early childhood. We have memorized that from BTU, from Vacation Bible School, from Sunday School. Sister Valerie, we have taught me over and over again. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Yeah, that's true, but you got to go to verse 17 too that says that for he did not come into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world may be saved. Stop seeking Jesus on people. Jesus is not a dog on a leash that you can just let go on people because people don't do you right, don't treat you right. But Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take good cheer because just as I've overcome the world, so will you. Stop seeking, seeking Jesus on people. Pray for them. Lead them to Jesus because the same way that he died and saved you, is what he came to do for them as well. Uh, 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 that, that was a grocery store owner who bans customers from his grocery store. You, you heard it right. Sharon. He's a grocery store owner and he bans customers from coming until into his grocery store. And when inquired at why he's banning customers from the grocery store, when asked about the decision, he told the local newspaper that he was forced to take such drastic action because of people's bad manners. A grocery store owner has banned people from coming into his grocery store. When asked about it, when inquired about it, he said he did it because he was tired of people's bad manners. First, he banned smoke. You can't come to my grocery store and you smoke. Then he banned bad language. So you can't come to my grocery store and you can't talk rude, you can't uh, curse, you can't use foul, disrespectful language. Then he banned baby strollers. They take up too much space, they go up and down the aisle, they knock things off the shelf. Then he banned pets. He said, don't bring your pets in here, don't bring any of that stuff. No smokers, no bad language, no strollers, no kids, none of that stuff. Don't even bring your blind eyes seeing dog here. Yeah, he, he's a, a grocery store owner who main purpose is to sell groceries, is denying people the access to purchase groceries in which he's in business for. And now, he has banned shoppers all together. Now, you got to come to the door and ring the bell and tell him what you want. He go get it off the shelf and bring it back to you. He says, I have lost business, but I cannot say how much. But here's the thing. I am a man of principle, and I stand by my decision. Now, it seems to me that a grocery store owner who bans customers from their store has lost sight of his purpose. You're a grocery store owner, and you have lost sight of the purpose that you're in business for in the first place. If your aim is to sell groceries, then you must 
this life in order to achieve your purpose. Come here, come here, come here this morning. Jesus, he says, <laughs> I don't care what kind of mess you're in, what kind of situation you're in, what foul language you use, what you have smoked in your life, what you have injected in your life, what you have wrestled with in your life is my job is come to save you and that's what I have come to do. That's why Luke wrote it down so plainly in chapter 19 and verse 10. He says, for the son of man has come to seek and save which is law. Jesus is stating this purpose in response to the crowd which grumbled about Jesus going to go eat with Zacchaeus. The chief tax collector, the chief sinner, because they'll collect your taxes and a whole lot more. That's how they got their money. That's how they got rich. You did know that Jesus picked a disciple that was a tax collector as well by the name of Matthew. So you can definitely understand that this ragtag group of 12 individuals that most people not only looked at Jesus and Jesus didn't know what he was doing. Jesus came to upset the system, but he got sinners with him as well. Yeah, they, they didn't like him. And Jesus says this about when he's going to Zacchaeus' house. Here he is, Sharon Cosby. He said, precisely, I'm going to be the guest of a great sinner because that is the expression reason I came to this earth as the son of man. To seek and to save those. I, I came to sin as the kids. And Jesus came to this earth to sit at your house as a sinner and to save you. That's why he was born. That is who the Christ is. Jesus did not come to answer every single one of your prayers and give you a big gift and make everybody like you and give you a six-figure job and give and not health issues. He came to save your soul. Because some that more, when this life is over, I want to go home. I want to go to a different place. I don't want to just, Lord, have mercy. I don't want to. Kirk Franklin has a song that said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. I don't care about the silver. I don't care about the gold. I don't care about the title. I don't care about the position. As long as I got Jesus, I am okay. We, we, we should be the arms and feet of Jesus. Ushering people in, assisting them to find their safety and their purpose in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus stood on a, on a course of action. That's what he was supposed to do. That's his purpose, is to save us. Jesus is the name that God gave him. Emmanuel. Is the name we gave him. And when we put these two names together, we, we understand that what his whole purpose was. You'll help me close this, won't you? On this fine Christmas Sunday morning. But as we look at Jesus, as we look at Emmanuel, we look at Jesus as the name that God gave. And then we look at the name Emmanuel, the name we gave. Then we understand uh, what his purpose is. But there's one more thing uh, that we uh, have to uh, understand. We have to understand uh, his name as the Christ. <laughs> when we understand uh, his name, uh, 
as the Christ. Uh, we'll understand uh, his priesthood. Uh, because Luke says uh, in that second chapter uh, and verse number 11, uh, he says, uh, for unto you uh, is born this day uh, in the city of David uh, a Savior, uh, which is uh, Christ uh, the Lord. Uh, let me help you out this morning. <laughs> As you drown with your family, uh, as you talk to your kids, uh, as everything uh, that you ever dreamed of, uh, that some of you uh, are filled with great joy uh, and tidings this morning. Uh, but let me let you know uh, that what the word uh, Christ really means. Uh, the Greek word uh, Christ uh, means Christos. Uh, and it means the same uh, as the Hebrew. Uh, it means uh, his name uh, is Messiah. Uh, Christ is the Messiah, uh, the anointed one. Uh, he is the one uh, that they had uh, longed for, uh, the one uh, that the prophets uh, preached about. Uh, in the name uh, of Christ, uh, we see him uh, as the holy high priest. Uh, Jesus came uh, to provide uh, redemption, uh, but through him, uh, we have uh, much more uh, than forgiveness. Uh, he ascended uh, back to the Father, uh, placing his royal uh, redeeming blood uh, on the mercy seat, uh, forever uh, removing uh, the veil uh, of separation. Mm. Christ uh, provided a means uh, by which uh, we can go to God. Uh, every Christian uh, has direct access uh, to the throne room uh, of God. Uh, Jesus, uh, Emmanuel, uh, our Savior, uh, the Christ, uh, he stands in uh, as our mediator. Uh, he stands in uh, making uh, intercessions uh, on our behalf uh, that when we do wrong uh, and we don't know what to do, uh, we go uh, and we call on the name of Jesus. Uh, and when uh, we do wrong uh, and you have been saved, uh, you can call on the name of Jesus uh, and God uh, not, does not see you, uh, but he sees the blood of Jesus uh, that he died for you. Uh, that was his purpose. Uh, he says you're going to name him Jesus because uh, he's going to save people uh, from their sins. Uh, we call him Emmanuel uh, because we know uh, that he's right there with us. Uh, we understand uh, his purpose uh, that why he was born that morning. Uh, I can go to the Father uh, without fear. Uh, we can come boldly uh, unto the throne room of grace. Uh, I stand cleansed uh, in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, God doesn't see me uh, as a condemned sinner, uh, but as uh, a clean saint. Uh, in case uh, you're still wondering, uh, in case uh, you're still inquiring, uh, in case uh, you still uh, have some questions this morning, you're asking yourself, uh, who is, uh, who is, uh, who is the Christ? Uh, let me remind you uh, that Genesis calls him uh, the creator uh, and promise redeemer. Uh, Exodus calls him uh, the Passover lamb. Uh, Leviticus calls him uh, the great high priest. Uh, Numbers called him uh, the water in desert. Uh, Deuteronomy calls him uh, 
he became uh, the curse for us. Uh, Joshua calls him uh, the commander uh, of the Lord's army. Uh, judges call him uh, the deliverer uh, from injustices. Uh, Ruth calls him uh, our kinsman uh, redeemer. Uh, First Samuel calls him uh, all in one. <laughs> He's the prophet, uh, the priest, uh, and the king. Uh, Second Samuel calls him uh, king of grace uh, and love. Uh, First Kings calls him uh, a ruler uh, greater than Solomon. Uh, Second Kings calls him uh, the powerful prophet. Uh, First Chronicles calls him uh, the son of David uh, that is coming to rule. Uh, Second Chronicles calls him uh, the king uh, who reigns eternally. Uh, Ezra calls him uh, the priest uh, that's proclaiming freedom. Uh, Nehemiah calls him uh, the one uh, who restores uh, what has uh, been broken down. Uh, Esther calls him uh, the protector uh, of his people. Uh, Job calls him uh, the mediator uh, between God and man. Mm. Psalm is called uh, our song uh, in the morning uh, and our song uh, at night. Uh, Proverbs calls him uh, our wisdom uh, when we don't have any. Uh, oh, Ecclesiastes calls him uh, our meaning uh, for life. Uh, and the song of Solomon calls him uh, the author uh, of faithful love. Uh, you know him, don't you? Uh, let me keep on giving you uh, some more descriptive terms uh, of who he is. Uh, because Isaiah called him uh, the suffering servant. Uh, Jeremiah called him uh, the weeping Messiah. Uh, Lamentations called him the uh, God's uh, wrath for us, uh, he put it upon himself. Uh, Ezekiel calls him the son of man. Uh, Daniel calls him uh, the stranger uh, in a fire with us. Uh, Hosea calls him uh, the faithful husband, uh, even when uh, we run away. Uh, Joel calls him, uh, he is sending uh, his spirit uh, to his people. Uh, but y'all know him, don't you? Can I give you uh, some more descriptive this morning? Uh, I'm coming down your road. Uh, I'm coming to your house. Uh, and maybe you know him uh, in the same way uh, that Amos knows him. Uh, Amos says uh, he is uh, a deliverer of justice uh, to the oppressed. Uh, Obadiah says uh, he is the, he's the judge uh, of those uh, who do evil. Uh, Jonah says uh, he is uh, the greatest missionary. Uh, Micah calls him. He's our cast. Uh, he casts our sins uh, into the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, Nahum calls him that the future world uh, of peace uh, that we cannot uh, ever imagine. Uh, Zephaniah calls him uh, that he crushes the uh, injustice. Uh, the Haggai calls him. Uh, he's our restorer uh, of worship. Uh, Zechariah calls him the prophecies of uh, a Messiah uh, that's been pierced for us. Malachi calls him uh, the son of righteousness who brings healing. Uh, Y'all know him, don't you? And maybe you uh, have learned uh, to call him uh, Emmanuel. Uh, maybe uh, you call him uh, Jesus, uh, because you understand his purpose. Uh, maybe you uh, have called him uh, a bridge uh, over troubled water. Uh, maybe some of you uh, have called him uh, a rock in a weary land, uh, a shelter in the time of storm. He's been bread when you're hungry. He's been water when you're thirsty. I'm so glad that on this day, that Jesus was born. I'm so glad that he was born. But, but that's not it. Because I can't take my seat on this grand Sunday morning uh, without giving you the reason he was born. One of my 
fragrant artist has a album titled Born to Die. Notorious B.I.G. has a album called Born to Die. And I'm so glad that Jesus was born to die. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm glad that he was born, y'all. But I'm even happier that he died. That one friend on a hill called Carol, they home high, they stretched him out. And he died. Yes, he died. They put him in that old borrowed tomb where he stayed there all night Friday, all day Saturday. But early that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. This day happened so that he could die. And that power that got him out of the grave is the same power that resides within us. Hey, Merry Christmas, y'all. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so blessed that you came that you came to save us. Yes, he came to save us, y'all. That's why he came. So as you go about your day today, remember what this true season is really all about. So if somebody asks you why you're so happy, why you celebrate Christmas, why you always got Jesus' name on your mouth, now you can tell them. He's the king of kings and lords. 